are going to be with you for this matchup. Take it away. Thank you, Maria. And welcome back to the booth here at the New Defender Championship. Marshall Cyclop with Paul Chion. And we're ready to dive into Reed Duke versus Greg Orange in, is this a good versus evil scenario here? The reason I say that is it's angels versus vampires, Paul. So you got to kind of pick your side here. Yeah, although, you know, I would never have pitted, I would never have put Reed Duke as the evil, right? Because he's playing <laughs> vampires and we all know vampires are the ones that are supposed to be the evil tribe. So uh, uh, curious on that one. But yes, this is really interesting. Wouldn't have expected to see two tribal decks going at it uh, with standard kind of being very established coming into this event. But but here we are. That's right. There are some, some good incentives for that. You know, the Grixis deck really does play out more like a, a mid-range grindy deck rather than being too vampire centric, though many of its creatures are vampires and there's a few synergies in there. But when you look at the Angels deck, it is an Angels deck. Like this deck oh, yeah. actually cares about the creature type Angel above all else. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm really curious to see how this plays out. I think generally speaking, when you have kind of the, the more traditional Esper mid-range deck go up against the Angels deck, I think the Esper deck has more removal spells that do a good job of dealing with the Angels. A little bit less so, I think, when you're on the Grixis side. Now, Reed did draw his one of Ray of Enfeeblement in his main. <laughs> You're going to see plenty more of those come out of the sideboard. But for example, a card like Voltage Surge, in theory, you would love to say, hey, this kills all of the angels. However, this deck doesn't generate a ton of artifacts, mm -hmm. right? It, you, can make, you can make blood with the Blood Tithe Harvester. You might be able to make a, a treasure off Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but there's not a ton of ways uh, to do so. So oftentimes, it's a shock. And shock does not have a lot of targets against this angels deck. Boy, he'd kill for a shock right now. Uh, Giada hit the battlefield, as you mentioned, the Raven Feeblement taking it out there on turn one. But uh, that turn, Greg had actually drawn an additional copy of Giada. Now, the good news for Reed Duke is here, he does have a target in the yard for Corpse Appraiser. Yeah. Now, so Greg did his value there. Greg did miss a land drop, but next turn, it's, it's going to still be pretty solid for him here. He's going to be able to attack, likely likely going for uh, an inspiring overseer to try to draw a card however meat hook massacre is a card that you need to be concerned about as well right because reed can go land meat hook massacre this turn oh. which i can't imagine he's not going to go for right? right this is just way too tempting here especially with the corpse appraiser on three toughness as well yeah is he the only thing reed has yeah, to attack he's first attack yeah first. that's what i was wondering too <laughs> he beat me to it i was trying to set it up marshall sorry man i should have got there quicker but we both <laughs> had the same thought you know do you send it in and risk the block it's just so unlikely that greg's gonna block there i mean i cannot imagine not going like greg's missed land drops he's relying on this giada for mana any angels he plays they're just gonna be so big um I suppose you can maybe try to wait till a later point in the game to go for a gigantic Meat Hook Massacre and maybe just go for the Shock on the Giada um, and just continue to develop his board. That is definitely another option. But Meat Hook just seems so good here. Your creature lives too. That's right. But, but, but you know, if Greg made the big brain play and block there, it's pretty bad for Reed. He loses his 3-3 in the transaction where it could have survived. But he wanted right. the two extra damage, and he got it down to 18. And now the Meat Hook Master comes down and wipes the board. Thankfully for Greg, though, a land off the top. He doesn't have a lot to do with it. He's just going to play Youthful Valkyrie for now. But uh, he'll be relieved because his last couple of draw steps have been four drop and a five drop. He really needs to hit this mana. Yeah, this is this is a gigantic turn here for Greg Orange. If he can find a land, there is a shot here that he can fight back, right? I mean, his hand yes. is just filled with extremely powerful, expensive spells. But if he doesn't, uh, it, it, it might just be a little a little too late if he finds it on the following turn. That's right. And you see Kaito Shizuki hit the battlefield here for Duke, so that's going to draw him a card straight away thanks to the Corpse Appraiser having gotten in. And he has also got Blood Tithe Harvester, so the clock getting very real. Land. There needs to be a land here, and, and that, it it's is. It's a painful land, but it is a land. He'll take it. Yeah, if I if I would have said, hey, Greg, how about <laughs> this land? He would have said, yeah, sure. Or if it was Greg, he would have said, I suppose. Curious <laughs> Retribution hits the battlefield, and he gets a 4-4. He's not going to bother... <clears throat> 
He's going to keep on chipping away here, trying to get that life total down. This is the first time that he's actually been able to get Reed for real down below 20. The Mihook Massacre helped buoy his life total earlier. And down to 18 falls Reed Duke. That, that was a pretty aggressive attack. Uh, just because if Reed has any removal spell here for the Angel, that Valkyrie yes. can at least stay back and help prevent some of the damage. Reed's got an active Mihook Massacre. Greg's sitting on 12 life. Um, Two damage getting through is not insignificant, but boy, the blockers line up perfectly here for Greg to have right. left it back as well. And, and just as you can see, you're going to see Reed Duke here utilize that blood token generated from the Harvester to get this angel off the battlefield, attack for six, get the drain in. I mean, Greg's going to go down to five here. If he left the angel, the Valkyrie back, it would be an attack for zero. Right, yeah. I mean... <laughs> That's tough. I mean, he, Greg, of course, recognizes that his deck isn't going to win if he just sits here over and over. But generally speaking, that might be true. Look at his hand, though. Double Wandering Emperor, Lisa Forgotten Angel, and a Vanishing Verse. Although I spoke a little too quickly about the verse. That's about to get to rest, probably. Now, Reed, uh, excuse me, uh, Greg will at least able to, will be able to get some of this life back. He's got the Wandering Emperor, could choose to exile one of these creatures. Now, if he draws a land too, right, and slams the Lisa, I mean, Greg, excuse me, Reed, currently doesn't have an answer for Lisa. And That's right. And Lisa just does a really great job, unless Reed can draw specifically Infernal Grasp. Not a lot of ways to get Lisa off the battlefield. And with... <laughs> There's <Retribu> Infernal <laughs> Grasp, Paul. <laughs> oh, of course. Did you call that? Did you know that was coming? What the... Uh, I mean, you know, I just got a little... I might be two minutes ahead of everybody, right? That's there you my, go. That's I my like secret. it. Yeah. I like it. That's how you do it. Infernal Grasp, and he even finds a Voltage Surge backup plan here <clears throat> for perhaps another smaller threat down the line. Reed did end up taking the Wandering Emperor, by the way, uh, rather than Vanishing Verse. Currently, he has no targets for Vanishing Verse, <laughs> so he's like, sure, keep it. And unfortunately for Greg, he's drawn another one. Yeah, not a great situation here for Greg. Really, really needed that land this turn. However, of course, given that Reed found the Infernal Grasp, it's going to be pretty, pretty tough here for Greg Orange, um, given that Reed just has the answers to all the creatures that Greg can play this turn. Of course, still needs to be mindful of Wandering Emperor. He does know about it because he cast a Duress earlier this game. Getting in anyways. And he's applying maximum pressure. Hive of the Eye Tyrant gets fired up alongside Double Corpse Appraiser, Blood Tithe Harvester. Everybody's coming in. Easy block here for Greg. He can block the 3-2 Blood Tithe Harvester with his 2-4 Valkyrie. And now he's going to play Wandering Emperor to take out yet another creature. This one is going to be the Corpse Appraiser. Yeah, this is going to get him... Up to eight life, then down to two. I am almost sad to see the Valkyrie will likely die to the voltage surge here post combat. Yeah, and that'll get him down to one. Will that just kill him here? Oh, excuse me. He's already. No, no, no. That'll. Uh... What do we have here? No, this will gain Reed a life. I, I always believe. forget on Meat Hook whether it's gains you or yeah, they that'll lose, gain him a depending life. on what happens. All right, so he's at one. <laughs> He can't have another creature from Reed die. He can't take a damage. He's facing down. Yeah, I mean, with this infernal grass. Menace creature, right? With this, because because Greg could technically go Lisa make a token, right? And that's mm -hmm. basically the play that you have to make. And if and if Reed didn't have infernal grasp, that might have been good enough. No, <laughs> there's also meat hook massacre. So yeah, yeah. So are we having fun yet? Greg Orange says, not so much. That early mana stumble really didn't work out well for him. Uh, his yeah. deck needs to, to hit every land drop and keep up to five, and then ideally stop. <laughs> but he wasn't able to do so. Reed Duke seals the deal there with that Infernal Grasp. That was a key moment. You called it out uh, early there, Paul, that he needed to find that card and then immediately did, and that was it. So to zoom out a little bit here, by the way, as players go to their sideboards, if you've been watching since yesterday, you'll know that Greg Orange, with his great performance here thus far in the tournament at 6-2, and two, 
has qualified for the world championship. So he's already secured his seat. Reed Duke has not. The interesting thing is that Reed is currently, so the leagues, that's the rivals and MPL leagues, will supply their top five otherwise unqualified players into the world championship. And Reed is currently in that list of five. And what that means is, remember, we're quite early on day two here, and there's still another day tomorrow as well that could affect this. Reed needs to keep on winning. He's got to keep himself in that select group where he can uh, secure a seat. Lots of pressure on him from a world championship perspective. Uh, from a tournament perspective, still a great start from both players. They're both six and two. And if they can have similar days today as they did yesterday, um, they could also find themselves in top eight contention because there is kind of a cheat cheat code to get into world championship. If you top six this event, you're just in. You don't have to worry about leaderboards or points or competitors or getting past or anything. So I wouldn't I wouldn't call it the easy way to do it, um, but it is the most straightforward. Yeah, and and that's going to be an interesting thing to follow tomorrow. Not only the six slots that that people will will get for the world championships by making the top six, but of course, if somebody double qualifies, mm -hmm. right? If somebody double qualifies, then that opens up a slot at large. So even people that you may think are out of contention because you don't see them in the top eight or they haven't necessarily locked in a slot, they could sneak in. If, for example, uh, you know. Uh, Yuki Chikawa, right? He was the world champion. Mm -hmm. And if he wins this event, that might that, that'll open up a slot. So things like that can happen. So again, it ain't over till it's over. You're gonna see a lot of stuff unfold, even potentially in game uh, in day three. It's funny because you'll see <laughs> the players who get past and sort of lose hope all of a sudden will start rooting very, very excuse hard me. for specific players. Yuta Takahashi, excuse me. Yuki Chikawa yeah. was the set champion. Right. Same but works for, of course, Yuki uh, Yuki Chikawa as well. Yep, same thing. But it is funny because <laughs> you'll start to see uh, pros make real good friends saying, oh, I'm rooting for this person extremely hard. It looks, oh, by yeah. the way, like Reed is mulliganing here or has mulliganed here. It, it, is, it, it, it is funny because in this tournament, you, you go from rooting for people to do poorly to cheering them on once you're kind of on the outside looking in, right? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. All of a sudden, you're, uh, you're rooting for them. All right. So we're underway here in game number two. Reed picks up game one and has taken a mulligan to six, but he's on the draw. As far as Greg goes, got a bit of a clunker here. It's a very powerful hand. Three drop, two four drops, and a five. But... You know, more traditionally from this deck, we'll see more of a smooth curve, like a two, three, four uh, out of this deck. And and right now, that's not what we're going to see. We're, we're going to see a three, hopefully four, five, something like that. This is some of the most powerful stuff that Greg can put on the battlefield, but he is giving Reed precious time to find his mana. Here's Righteous Valkyrie hitting on turn three. This is the first play from, uh, well, from either player. Right, but you know, th this might be the way that Greg looks to win these matchups, right? It becomes more of a battle of attrition because after mm -hmm. Cyborg, you can expect a Grixis deck to have all kinds of removal. One of the best cards in the matchup probably is that Legion Angel, right? That Greg mm -hmm. Orange is gonna play. Uh, it, of course, in any mid-range matchup because that allows you to just fight through all the removal spells that Reed may launch because every time you play Legion Angel, I mean, you're up two cards. Yeah, so there we go. And a Braid is going to kill it. But this is the type of fight that Greg can actually win. Yeah, I mean, if Reed he... doesn't have any pressure. He just right. has a handful of removal spells. So, you know, Greg can't fight through this. However, I mean, that Mind Flayer in Reed's hand. Yes. If he can find a blue source, right? Greg, as it stands, does not have an immediate answer to that Mind Flayer. So, I mean, imagine something like a Mind Flayer stealing a Lisa, right? Yeah, that, that could be fantastic. He's also... Got all this one-for-one -one removal with Infernal Grasp and Voltage Surge. We may see cards like Mind Flayer or Meat Hook Massacre be the difference here. Because, honestly, one for one against Legion Angel is not a way to victory. Right. Greg choosing to go with the Wandering Emperor, uh, Wandering Emperor here instead of the Legion Angel. Play around a Counterspell. Make it awkward on Reed Duke's mana. Talking. 
Yeah, and this uh, this puts Greg in a a great situation here, right? Really I mean, he's does. got it. Active Wandering Emperor uh, could choose to play an Elspeth Resplendent here. On top of that, if maybe he doesn't want to expose himself to a, a, a maybe a sweeper effect. If you want to play around a potential negate, though, then you just run out of creature. He's going to get chippy here with uh, Samurai. It looks like Reed's really thinking about his options here. I it's finds tough. himself in a tough position. Also, you know, Reed will be aware that Greg, having not played anything on turn two, means that his hand, you know, he's got a lot of expensive stuff in hand. And yeah, there's Elspeth Resplendent Oof. on the yeah. stack now as well. And no answer for that here for Duke either. And he's going to use it to generate some advantage here. Oh, and that's Yikes. a whiff. This is the, the second time we've seen Greg Orange whiff on uh, yeah. Elspeth Resplendent. Not being too good. These uh, collected company type effects have not been good to our players so far. No, at, least in the, at least in the feature matches. Got a land out of the deal. Passes it back. Yeah, Reed likely going to save that voltage surge now. Aim that one straight at Elspeth Resplendent. He uses his other removal spell to just take out one of the samurai again this is a very uphill climb here for reed duke he is using one for one removal on creatures or threats that uh that require more than that right like yeah. you you can't you can't use voltage surge on two two samurai over and over again and expect to win the game just like you can't use a braid on legion angel over and over again and expect to win the game it's gonna need a haymaker or something to stick that gives him a repeated advantage, like Mind Flayer might be worth it. Meat Mass Meat Hood Massacre could be oh, quite good. And, and this is gonna be tough. Reed instead choosing to go for the yeah. line that gives him the best chance at fighting through everything, assuming Greg Orange doesn't have a removal spell. But Greg has an infernal grasp, and this is gonna make it that much more difficult here for Reed. I now, love that, yeah, go ahead. There's Paul. an active Elspeth, right? Yes. I understand the reasoning behind doing this. It's like, I'm so far behind. You have two Planeswalkers in play. I need my creature to be the thing that kills your Planeswalkers here. And I know that one of the three cards in your hand is a Legion Angel. So I'm just hoping that you don't have a removal spell so my Harvester can clean up the board. That's right. It's, it's, it's the judgment calls that you have to make as a high level Magic player like Reed, where you're constantly weighing risk versus reward. What can I tolerate? How much risk can I tolerate here? And in this case, Reed decided he needed to take the riskiest, highest upside line available to him to try to claw back into this game. He knew that there was going to be the chance that his Blood Tithe Harvester could get killed and the House of Cards would fall apart on him. And that is, in fact, what happened. But you make that judgment call not out of fear, right? You make it out of, this is what needs to happen if I'm going to have a chance to win the game. Because if you use the Voltage Surge there to kill the Elspeth, then they ha still have the token to trade off your Harvester, and now maybe Wandering Emperor can completely take over the game, and you don't have a, a clean way forward. So God. that did backfire on Reed, however, and he's in a very difficult position now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I, like, uh, I like Greg choosing to go with the Legion Angel there instead of the Lisa. He could have easily just run out the Lisa, but... Uh, Definitely has to be mindful that a singular copy of Mind Flayer is in Reed Duke's sideboard. Mm -hmm. And if that's what, because he's so far ahead here, it's like, how can you lose? It's like, oh, if he steals my Lisa, right? And I, and I don't have a way to kill it. That's how we can get back into this. So you know what? I'm going to play out this Legion Angel instead. Present a big enough board where if you do have a Mind Flayer, you're probably going to have to cast it on my Legion Angel. Then you slam the Lisa. Boy, look at this. He's really kind of going all in. Greg is going to get rid of Wandering Emperor and now put a counter on the new token. That does leave multiple three toughness creatures on the battlefield, and that Meat Hook Massacre is looking okay here. Yep, Meat Hook will deal with two of the creatures. And it'll leave the smallest one behind as well, so that could yeah. buy Reed a lot of time. And remember, Wandering Emperor's gone now because of that. So there we go. Meat Hook Massacre takes out two of the three creatures on the other side and 18 life here for Duke. 
Giada Font of Hope off the top of the library now for Greg. And, and, and now he says, all right, Lisa now. I'm all in. He's going to play right. Lisa Forgotten Archangel, <laughs> which, by the way, gets two counters. It's a 6-7 Flying Lifelinker. Yeah, don't pump the Lisa. I know a hero Do yeah. not want to pump the Lisa here. Yeah, what actually needs to happen is that, where there's now a blocker for the Lisa because uh, that Mind Flayer can come down and steal it. All right. This is huge. This is leading no heavily on Lisa. Yeah, he doesn't. And at the same time, the Lisa can't really attack. So right. Greg can still continue to get advantages here, right? With that active Elspeth in play. That's right. And Legion Angel. And this is a huge Legion Angel. Massive. So, I mean, a ton of triggers. Now, I believe Righteous Valkyrie is also <laughs> going to trigger. It does. Look at that. Jeez. That's so a he can eight. attack now because he has a 6 8 and a 9 8 to block. Wow. What a turn here. And I don't think that Meat Hook Massacre is going to be able to take care of 11 8 8 and 4 toughness here for Duke. Okay. Boy, this Angel's deck, when it goes, it goes big. Oh, yeah. I mean, two of those creatures just hit this turn. Right. Just hit seven. He's got a six, eight, and a nine, eight. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're now out of Meat Hook Massacre range. Um, Definitely there. We have, we don't even have six damage to spread around because we only have one red source. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't see how we can get out of this overwhelming board state here. Yeah, he's just going to get overran in the air next turn. Wow, what a turn for Greg Orange. Has his, most of his board swept, has most of his creatures picked off one by one with removal from Reed, and still ends up with this board state at the end of it all. Yeah, Just a cool 28 power in the air, no bigs. Yeah, the, the issue with, with kind of reed's hand here was just the fact that he only had the removal spells right this deck mm -hmm. does have a lot of ways to generate card advantage you have the corpse appraiser you have evelyn you have fable of the mirror breaker but you know all he had was a handful of removal and of course you can't mulligan that hand right you're just gonna you look at your hand you're like hey look i have answers for your next three to four plays and over the course of those turns i'm gonna hope to draw one of those spells and he just didn't Okay, well, he gets rid of Elspeth finally with Voltage this, Surge, but that's a, probably the, the last gasp here from Reed. A, a 6-5 Inspiring Overseer? No, 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 we have a Righteous... I'm not even going to bother. I'm, <laughs> I'm, it's a gigantic Overseer that's going to draw some cards. Yes, it is. Here, how about this? Chat, help me out with this. I'm sure I'm sure somebody who's good with the maths. There we go. It's, a, it's an 8-7. Chat's too slow to keep up with you, Paul. Come on. Drew another Elspeth. And resplendent. that's an Elspeth, too. Yeah, only three mana available there for Reed Duke. And you can see Greg is thinking about if there's anything that could matter here. Remember, Lisa does have lifelink. So Reed with a block is at a virtual 10 life, though. He's still yeah. very oh, what, much dead what are we going to find this time? Reed is looking at his sideboard, by the way. <laughs> He's just like, He's like, uh, all like right. have your fun. Have What's your my plan? Oh, here's another Righteous Valkyrie. Look. Okay. okay. Look at this board. 13, 15 youthful Attack. Valkyrie, anybody? Reed will good, pick up approximately block, 25 damage. That's right. He'll gain a little bit back, but it won't be enough. He's going to lose game number two. Greg Orange with a convincing victory. And Paul, I want to go back to a point that we made at the beginning of this game where you said, hey, maybe this is part of Greg's plan, right? Instead of the the curve out kind of aggro draw that you might be able to get out of this deck, instead it's the heavy hitters. And that's how it played out. And boy, did they hit heavy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, th those are the cards that are going to be more important because you, Reed will just have so many ways to kill your two-man angels. Now, Greg, it does look like he does have all the elements of his curve, right? He does have those two drops in. Um, but he just kind of drew the heavier part of his deck and probably just wants to do that again. Reed did mulligan that game, so was at a slight disadvantage there. And as you mentioned, the keep that he ended up having was, was a mix of lands and spells that you can't really send back, but was not ideal, it, particularly for the way that Greg Orange's hand developed, where it ended up being three drop, four drop, five drop, 
rather than two, three, four, where maybe Reed could have kept up there. Yeah, definitely. Reed's reviewing once again to see if there's anything he'd like. You can see the Ray of Enfeeblements over on the left. He had that one in game one, but he gets to add another couple post board. Those are excellent in the matchup. Really what he wants to see in his opener to keep Giada from going off. But the Voltage Surge times four helps there as well. Yeah, I, I wonder if you may even consider bringing in that Disdainful Stroke as uh, Greg's oh. deck has a ton of fours and fives. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah, it really does. Like, yeah. all the cards you really care about, right? Yeah. I mean, it's possible that this deck just wants to tap out most of the time. So it's mm. maybe not something that you're interested in and you'd rather just lean on removal spells. But... Um, yeah, he does have the one copy of Make Disappear left in just to keep Greg honest, but he decided not to go with the stroke, probably for the reasons that you said, Paul. He'd prefer to tap out and then be reactive. Whatever hits the battlefield, he feels like he can kill after rather than having to keep up mana. Hey, there's that Ray of Enfeeblement in the opening hand as well as Voltage Surge. Is there cheap stuff in hand here? No, and look at this. It tells us more about what Greg Orange feels about the matchup. He's kept a hand where the first play he can make is four mana. Yeah. And uh, Reed's going to have uh, an okay call. But remember, this Grixis mid-range deck or Grixis Vampire's deck, it's kind of more of the controlling end of the spectrum. So, you know, sure, you have this Blood Tide Harvester, but it, it, it doesn't kill you especially quick. Mm -hmm. And I spoke a little too soon. Youthful Valkyrie off the top of the library here in turn two for Greg will give him a two-mana play. This is a great draw here from Reed Duke, the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Just nice curve here. 3 2 into a creature that can make you that treasure. And then your hand is just filled with extremely efficient removal, right? Ray of Enfeeblement yes. may, may as well just read one mana, destroy target creature in this matchup. Right. And the Valkyrie gets into the red zone here, but it doesn't do anything else. Greg just says, you know what? Land go. Doesn't have a play for the turn, so he's got to wait. And this is going to be very difficult. Yeah, and Reed's see. hand is already <laughs> great as it is against the Angels deck, so this is going to be pretty difficult. Uh, you're definitely keeping the Raven Feeblements. Mm -hmm. and, and he's going to get you, rid of the Voltage Surge, it looks like. Yeah, volt, you can get rid of the Voltage Surge, and you definitely want to keep that land. You don't want to miss a land drop, so... Ooh, another Fable. Remember, he's going to get the bonus treasure here as well. Yeah, and you still have access to the Ray, so this is a great, great start here for Reed. I remember, at the start, he just had a Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah. And we went back-to-back -back Fables here. So Fury's Retribution will make a 4-4 Angel, but it is white in color, and therefore Ray of Enfeeblement ready. I, I just don't see how Greg can get through this, right? Reed, Reed just goes, kill your two creatures, mm -hmm. attack you for seven. Yeah. Right? Actually, he can even play Actually, an adversary next turn, right? He yeah, can just go sack treasure, adversary, attack you for 10, kill your thing, get you down to two, and I have four creatures on in play with you right. on an empty board. Right, and remember, Greg doesn't run sweepers or anything like that, so how do you get out of this mess? And he even has that one-two punch, build your own Snapcaster Mage. Next turn, you're going to see Reflection of Kiki Jiki with the potential to copy Bloodthirsty Adversary. So he's gonna have him at two life here and no board state out, and the Fury's Retribution is gonna brick yeah, on turn two. two. Uh, Greg Orange does not play a Wrath, to my knowledge, so. I don't think so either. And a Youthful Valkyrie off the top is gonna be the death knell here as Greg Orange concedes and Reed Duke keeps himself in that world championship discussion. He is currently qualified.